The surface of Mars, we now know, is covered with meteor craters, gigantic mountains, and deserts that reach around the entire planet. And one thing more, a giant sculpture that many scientists now speculate was created by some unknown race of intelligent beings. And if it is what it appears to be, what does that have to do with Earth? Mars is our nearest and most reachable galactic neighbor, but for some as yet unexplained reason, trying to study this planet has met with failure after failure. Beginning with two attempts by the Soviets in 1960, both missions mysteriously failed. After the problems the Russians had getting their probes to Mars, American scientists started to joke among themselves about some great galactic ghoul that was uh, preventing our missions from getting there too. In November 1964, the Americans launched the Mariner missions to Mars. But as, as it approached Mars, Mariner 3's camera shroud failed to open, making the camera useless. It does indeed seem that missions to Mars have met with an unusually high failure rate. But in July of 1965, the American probe Mariner 4 finally brought success and completed the first flyby of Mars. So had Earth scientists at last outwitted the galactic ghoul? Apparently not. When the Soviets then attempted to actually land a probe on Mars, something astonishing happened. Everything in the Mars probe seemed to be working perfectly, and then it just shut off. Could it be that there is something out there that's interfering with Earth's efforts to conquer space? Or is it all just an incredible string of coincidences? Whatever the reason, it was five years before the United States made another attempt to reach Mars. But in 1976, the Viking probe began sending volumes of images back to Earth from their orbits above Mars, including these. Encouraged by the success of the Viking probe, the Soviet Union, with international cooperation, uh, launched a, a set of satellites in 1988. Phobos-1 never even made it to the planet. At some point, it just disappeared. Uh, Phobos-2, the uh, probe that was sent up to look at one of the moons of Mars, apparently encountered something very strange, of which the Soviets had a picture that did surface in the United States. Of a very massive elliptical shape uh, object. Uh, the NASA individuals here that may know about it, of course, would never make a comment on it. And then it too disappeared. And five years later, the American space probe Mars Orbiter seems to have met the same fate. But what exactly did happen to them? Many researchers now believe the loss of so many Mars probes cannot be an accident, but a deliberate attack on spacecraft from Earth by something or someone near Mars that does not wish to be photographed. Could this be true? Has this bizarre string of space disasters occurred because we caught a glimpse of something we were not supposed to see? Has the Viking space probe presented us with a mystery that is unsolvable? The mystery first began to unfold in 1976, when the unmanned Viking space probe was going about its highly successful mapping mission of our neighbor planet. When the images that were transmitted back to Earth began to be analyzed, this surface feature in the region designated as Sidonia caught the attention of people all over the Earth. The initial official re reaction from NASA about this photograph is that it was just a trick of chance sunlighting. Certainly no one believed that there was a, a huge carved face on the surface of Mars. Besides, who could have made such a thing? Uh, no one believes in the science fiction version of men on Mars. And we know that Mars is not capable of supporting intelligent life as we know it. So the idea of this being a creation of intelligence was uh, not even considered by NASA. Despite all of this, when the image was first recorded, it was labeled head. But fortunately, the story doesn't end there. The picture caught the eye of image analysis experts Vince DiPietro and Greg Molinar. DiPietro and Molinar undertook the colossal task of discovering what the strange picture really showed. At, at first, they just enlarged the photo and, and uh, considered there was nothing there at all. So uh, Vincent DiPietro and I uh, designed a computer program to enhance the image uh, in much more detail than NASA had done. And even though their new process resulted in images as convincing as these, NASA apparently continued to insist 
that the image was nothing more than a trick of the light. And to prove it, they said that Viking had photographed the same area from a different angle and that there was no face visible in the second photograph. Then we went through the archives to see if there was any other satellite passes over that same area. Uh, NASA said there wasn't at first, and uh, we looked through their archives and found one. And there, just as before, there was a face with a higher sun angle showing more detail than before. And images of the eyes showed pupils, and of the mouth area showed teeth. We were very impressed. Now there were two photographs of the head. Was this proof the image was built by intelligent beings? Did this second photograph solve the mystery, or was it only the beginning of an even greater puzzle? A puzzle with one of the most important pieces found on Earth. The startling answer, UFO Diaries return. These two separate frames, identified by their NASA frame numbers, 35A72 and 70A13, also contain considerable detail about the surrounding area, revealing several other images that DiPietro and Molinar found as exciting as the mysterious face. About 10 miles away from the uh, face is a couple of pyramids. Uh, and the strange thing about those pyramids is uh, their very regular triangular shape. And in the corner of each corner, there appears to be a buttress. And uh, on close examination, the, the buttress itself is pyramid shaped. Was this undeniable proof that an intelligent race had once lived on the planet Mars? This would be really, really remarkable for this to be a natural formation. Since the time of that discovery, science writer and consultant Richard Hoagland has worked tirelessly to discover the whole truth about the mysterious Sedonia region of Mars. A member of our team, Dr. Mark Carlotto, decided to use a state-of-the-art 3D computer modeling technique, which now strongly indicates that the face could, in fact, be a real three-dimensional human-looking sculpture, a sculpture 1,500 feet high and over a mile long. But is it not still possible that these intriguing shapes are really nothing more than accidents of nature? that the researchers who study them are simply letting their imaginations run wild. Many intriguing questions are raised by the apparent connections between this image from the planet Mars and ancient structures here on Earth. Perhaps the most intriguing being, does this image on the surface of another planet give us important clues to the origins of ancient structures on our world? Richard Hoagland's study team may have uncovered proof that one of our oldest relics was not built by human hands. And as I began looking at some references and books and talking with colleagues, this was a sketch done by Shannon, one of our early artists on the team, we, we both realized that this image was somehow trying to tell us something profound. It was trying to say this. Could the resemblance between the face at Sidonia and the Sphinx at Giza be more than a mere coincidence? And if not, does all this prove once and for all that these great monuments were all designed and built by an intelligent race from another world? Did the Egyptians, in fact, as we know them, do this remarkable structure? Recent archaeological and geological discoveries demonstrate that the Sphinx is at least 10,000 years old and maybe even older. That is, the Sphinx appears to be much, much more heavily weathered than we have any right to expect from only, quote, 5,000 years of desert weathering. The kind of weathering we see on the Sphinx is best explained by the action of running water. You need rain to get that degree of erosion, 12 feet of it in some places. And that amount of rain has not fallen in Egypt for at least 10, maybe 15 or 20,000 years. Now that raises a wonderful problem. It means that we're now looking at a monumental work of art created at a time when nobody else on planet Earth is supposedly able to do anything of that magnitude or scale. There's no other contemporary civilization to pin it on. So who did it? Could these both be ancient sculptures made by the same race of beings? If so, who or what is this face intended to represent? 
the key to understanding the face on Mars may lie in the fact that the Sphinx of Egypt is a combination of hominid and feline, half man, half lion. It was at this point that we began to worry less about the ultimate reality of the so-called face on Mars and more about the meaning of the message of Sidonia. An astonishing discovery when UFO Diaries returns. Hoagland's researchers, in comparing the two images, made an amazing discovery. Maybe there's a connection. Maybe the face of Sidonia is half man, half something else. First, they copied the left half of the Sidonia head, made a mirror image of it, and pasted it onto the other side. That's the Simeon half. The results were interesting, but inconclusive. Wouldn't it be wild if the picture However, when they tried the same thing with the right half, flipped it over and matched it up on the left side, the result was a clear image of a lion's head. Are these merely strange optical illusions, or are they the key to understanding the real truth behind our own past? Surely it's still possible that mere coincidence could be the culprit behind all of these so-called connections between monuments of Earth and the images we've seen from Mars. Or is there any more and better evidence? In southwest England, the ancient man-made mountain of Silbury Hill has loomed over the horizon since time immemorial. Nearby is Avebury, believed to be a fortress centuries old, tall earthen walls protecting an inner mound. The area also contains an amazing connection to the structures at Sidonia. The connection here was determined not by simple observation and supposition, but was founded in the solid facts of geometry. The question was, what if the ancient ruins in England corresponded in size, shape, and dimension to the features on the plain of Sidonia? What if the Avery Circle was to represent the crater and Silbury was to represent the tholus, and the angles and positions of ancient features, including where the cliff would be, and where the tetrahedral pyramid would be, and angles to other key things in this vicinity, all seem to match, including the very size of Silbury Hill in terms of its exterior uh, moat in reference to the tholus. Were all of these structures built by the same race of beings? human or otherwise? And if so, does this constitute new evidence that intelligent life could have once thrived on the planet Mars? Richard Hoagland suggests many possibilities. Uh, one is that we had a previous high-tech civilization on Earth which developed spaceflight, went to Mars, built some stuff, and then collapsed. And we're now just rediscovering our heritage. The second hypothesis is that someone else from far out there, from the stars, thousands, hundreds of light years away, came to the solar system, came to Mars, built the stuff, and built a monument to this primitive being that would someday become a human being, the human species, here on Earth. In either case, it would seem that some global catastrophe forced the Martian population to abandon their world and move to another, to the Earth. And someday, we may discover, in fact, that we are the Martians after all. Assuming for a moment that there once was a flourishing race on Mars and that they built this complex structure, one important question remains. Why? Sidonia was probably constructed to communicate some very fundamental information. We believe now that we are looking at the outlines of a whole new physics, how the universe functions, a kind of a grand unified theory, as it were, given to us, communicated, even on the photographs taken by Viking, by the geometric layout of the structures. Researchers now believe that the key to understanding the geometry of the DNM pyramid may be in the size, shape, and position of the massive structure. Hoagland and others point out that the pyramid is not oriented to the Martian North Pole, but is turned slightly to one side. Latitude lines show that two of the faces are out of alignment at exactly the same angle, 19.5 degrees. Why 19.5? That on every major and minor planet that we have flown by, looked at, or mapped in the last 30 years through NASA imagery, 
The major disturbance, starting with Jupiter in the great red spot, lies just about at 19.5 north or south. The great red spot on the planet Jupiter is essentially a giant cyclone, an atmospheric storm larger than the entire planet Earth. It continues to churn away for year after year, right at 19.5 degrees south. Hoagland asserts that on every planet in our solar system, there does seem to be some kind of major geological or atmospheric disturbance found at 19.5 degrees north or south, including our own gigantic volcano, Mauna Loa. Colossal power rages up from the center of the Earth, emerging in the Hawaiian Islands at 19.5 degrees north. Does this suggest that the builders of the DNM pyramid recorded in its structure a sort of key to the inner nature of every planet in our system, including our own? According to Hoagland, the builders of the monuments at Sidonia had a reason for leaving the number 19.5 encrypted in a pyramid. This is a four-sided, four-cornered object termed a tetrahedron. Because if you put this structure in a sphere, it predicts some remarkable phenomena. Hoagland says that if a perfect tetrahedron or pyramid is placed inside a sphere such as a planet so that one tip is at the north or south pole, the other tips will fall at the latitudes of 19.5 degrees north or south, the same as the angles discovered in the DNM pyramid. Was this giant tetrahedron built on the plains of Sidonia to help future generations understand the sources of power within their own planets? If these discoveries truly are the long-awaited proof that there once was intelligent life on another world, would it not seem reasonable that we try to get a closer look at the Sidonia region of Mars? And in 1992, an attempt was made to do exactly that, but with strange and surprising results. The bizarre puzzle of the Mars orbiter when UFO diaries return. On September 25th, 1992, one of the most sophisticated space probes of its kind was launched into outer space. The Mars Observer was designed and programmed to approach, photograph, and carefully study the red planet in far greater detail than ever before. Then on August 21st, 1993, at precisely 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the radio signals from the Mars Observer stopped. The Mars Observer probe, over 17 years in the making at a project cost of nearly $1 billion, had gone silent, suddenly and completely. But why? Was there a simple malfunction? Or is there more to the mystery than that? The Mars Observer mission may have been doomed before it even left the ground. Hurricane Andrew hit the coast of Florida just about the time the uh, Mars Observer was being prepared for launch. Even though it had been prepared for such an onslaught, technicians checked the probe to make sure that it had not been damaged by the storm. The nitrogen system was equipped with special filters to prevent such uh, uh, dust and debris from being taken into the system, and the cameras were in a separate compartment. In spite of this, bits of paper and dust and debris was found in both compartments. It looked like someone had uh, swept the floor and taken the dustpan and dumped it in those compartments. It's unlikely that Hurricane Andrew would have been responsible for all of that damage. But if not the hurricane, then who? Why would anyone wish to sabotage a photographic expedition to Mars? Could this be because someone or something doesn't want us to get a closer look at our neighbor planet? And if that's true, what is the secret they're trying to protect? There are many experts now who believe that the forces protecting a secret on Mars may not be on the red planet, but here on Earth. Since the first television cameras flew with space missions in the mid-1960s, NASA has always shared its video images with the world. But many sources report that just before the launch of the Mars Observer, NASA announced that for the first time ever, they would not allow any images sent back from Mars to be broadcast on live TV. Why? Why would the National Space Agency suddenly change a policy that had stood for almost 40 years? 
Had they learned something about Mars that they wouldn't admit? NASA has had a long, uh, very close relationship with the Department of Defense. Uh, so they have been, I believe, under a lot of national security restrictions. And there is very much uh, evidence, I believe, of backtracking and coyness on behalf of NASA and their involvement with UFOs. Like all government projects, if they don't have an answer, they don't want to be embarrassed. So I th they keep everything secret until they know more about it. The Mars Observer might have given us definitive answers to the question of intelligent life on Mars, and it might not have. But as of now, the Mars Observer appears to be lost somewhere in the vast reaches of space. Could it be just the latest victim of the galactic ghoul? Or is there some other explanation? Stanley McDaniel, author of the McDaniel Report, believes there is a very practical really explanation. But um, some people have speculated that um, NASA uh, is afraid that it'll lose funding if it uh, even so much as hints that it might imagine that there are extraterrestrial artifacts on Mars or elsewhere in the solar system. Uh, I think they believe that Congress would think this was so far-fetched that they would withdraw funds. There are still so many questions left unanswered. Is this face just a natural formation, or was it constructed by some long-lost civilization? And what of the pyramids of Mars? Are they ancestors of the pyramids of Egypt, or just uniquely shaped piles of frozen Martian soil? Is the perfect geometric precision found in these surface features of Sidonia nothing more than a bizarre series of coincidences? Could it be that we are descendants of ancient Martians who sought refuge from their own dying world? If so, does that mean that we are the Martians we claimed we might someday meet? As scientists plan future manned missions to the Red Planet, are we on the verge of learning that Mars is not only our destination, it was also once the beginning?